Financial health and financial literacy are really two different things that you have to consider when you are thinking about your financial plan. Do you really have your financial health where it needs to be? And do you have the knowledge that goes into making correct decisions going forward to make sure that you are best set up for your future? Join us on Consider This Program as we talk about how to determine if you are financially healthy. Well, good morning and welcome to Consider This Program. I am your host, Joe Clark. And I'm Jamie Burton. And we are just plum tickled to have you guys along. Happy New Year. Um, So happy that you could be here. We're talking about your financial health and what it's going to look like in 2022. I don't know what goals and initiatives you set forward to yourself this year. I always like people and and usually challenge you guys, and I'll do that again, uh, to go ahead and email me and say, hey, this is you know, because we all could use some accountability. This is what I'm really working on for 2022. Tell me what that goal and objective is. Uh, we are going to break down on the show today the difference between financial literacy. That's what I would say is, you know, okay, you know things, uh, to actually having financially financial discipline or financial health and actually doing things, all right? Knowing versus doing two different things with us today are Jamie Burton, uh, one of our senior advisors at the Financial Enhancement Group and uh, college graduate from Purdue University, has her degree in financial planning, proud mama and uh, and wife, and uh, just very, very honored to have you along with us, Jamie. Thank you. Glad right. to be here. Talk about it. <laughs> Yeah, so when we meet with our families, we want to make sure that their financial health is on the right track. So when we say financial health, what we really mean is that we want to make sure that people have the ability to meet the financial um, obligations that they have going forward. They want to make sure that they have the cash flow that they need to have while also having assets saved up for in the future. And we want to make sure that if some kind of hardship were to happen, that they are going to be able to weather the storm, get through it, and still be able to continue on and set themselves up for success in the future. So financial health is so important, and it's a completely different topic than financial literacy, as you were alluding to. Um, With financial literacy, it just means that you have the knowledge of the right decisions that you should be making going forward. It doesn't mean that you, one, are making those decisions, or two, have the ability and the resources to make those decisions going forward. All right. So let's (laughs) let's talk about literacy. So, you know, I always tell people I talk out of three sides of my mouth, and, you know, my mama will always point out I only have two sides, Um, but there really are three. So I'm a certified financial planner by trade, um, and you know I've got a lot of academic stuff in terms of what they believe is the way things ought to be taught. Right? Um, God blessed me, and I wanted to be in a professor at Purdue University for seven years, fourteen semesters, and I got to meet people like Jamie and Grant and Taylor and Andrew and and Chris. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's the academic side. And then there's the Rodney Dangerfield side. And um, people always laugh when I say that. So if, you have, if you've not seen Back to School, you know, it's a, it's, some people may say a little crude and, and maybe not the most um, Christian-based movie. And that, I'll buy that. Uh, that's fair. Um, but it really does depict how my career started. I got into this industry in two weeks before the crash in 1987. And when I say this industry, managing money, right, I went to IU. Uh, to go to law school for estate planning, and Reagan changed the tax code in 86, got into the financial services industry two weeks before the crash in 87, and everybody else quit. And, you know, I come from a family of public educators. Back then, you know, they didn't have any money, um, didn't know what a mutual fund was. They couldn't help me. Nobody in my family could help me, right? And I had to figure out what all of this gunk and, you know, stuff was. And, um, then I went in, uh, 94 to be get, uh, to become a certified financial planner where I started to get some of that quote unquote literacy. Mm-hmm. Now here's what I will tell you. And, and I don't think it's prolific as much as it was then, but I used to be, I used to bet people a hundred dollar bill, um, in 1999, if you told me what a story was in Forbes, Fortune or Business Week, right? So if you told me the headline of the story, and the gist of what the author was trying to get to, I would bet you with a hundred dollars. I bet you a hundred dollars within two pages. I could tell you the advertiser, right? Because the story was written to defend 
what the guy buying the marketing was trying to sell. Right. right. And so you really have to think about this from a literacy standpoint. Mm-hmm. Right. So when 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 academics, you know, think of me at Purdue, mm-hmm. when academics write white papers and research stuff, it's almost always based on the median income. And ladies and gentlemen, you're not up at six o'clock on a Saturday morning listening to this. Uh, you're not taking your time to listen to this podcast when there's so many others that are out there if you are average. So <clears throat> reading something that's written about people with the median income of less than $50,000 a year married finally and jointly is not really you doing you any good. You're not you're not getting any literacy, right? Uh, you reading about what a billionaire is doing is probably not getting you any literacy either, mm-hmm. right? What what we need to do is focus on your uniqueness, the fact of who you are. It's why we built the programs the way we do so that when you come in, Jamie is trained to listen to you for understanding, not listen to you so she can simply respond. Correct. Yeah. And one issue that we're seeing more and more going forward these days with the baby boom generation getting older and leaving assets to their heirs is that we're seeing all these young people that have the financial wealth now, but they don't have the financial literacy. And that can really get them into trouble where they're making the wrong decisions and they're just blowing through that wealth and not doing the best things that they can with it. So when we meet with people, when they come in for their family updates or when we have new people come in for their 90-minute complimentary meeting, we want to make sure that if they have this wealth that they have inherited, that we are able to educate them and get them more of that financial literacy so they can get to this financially healthy situation. Yeah, one one of the things we try to tell people, you know, back in 1980 when they started the Keo Act and 401ks and 403bs, <clears throat> I don't think anybody. Um, and if I were there in 1980, I would. I don't think I would have been either. I don't, none of us presumed people would have two million dollars in 401ks. No. Right. So <clears throat> when when something happens to me, I have two daughters. One's going to be 30. One's 25. Um, you know, something happens to me they're going to gain wealth because we move from a defined benefit where you had a pension to a defined contribution plan where I've been putting money into 401ks and IRAs for years, mm-hmm. right? Doesn't mean they have any knowledge about that. And, you know, I can I can tell you the the pain that is caused. Um, and, and I've got a, I don't know, I like him. I can't help it. Um, good guy who um, received an inheritance and um, told me that he did not appreciate me telling you that inheritances could harm people. Um, There's no way for me to tell you I took that well. Um, And I didn't. Um, So there are some people out there who've gotten inheritance and it's gone okay. But I will tell you, you know, if you make $40,000 or $50,000 a year, you put yourself through school and you're working hard to be able to save and accumulate money and you're doing that heavy lifting, right? You're making that decision every every week or every two weeks when your paycheck comes out and you're taking 10% of it to put into a 401k, right? So you're saving four or $5,000 a year so you can have a better future. And all of a sudden I kick the bucket and you get a million dollars. It does not help everyone. Now, some people it does, but other people it really, really, really hinders. And when I look at this, there, there's a reason why so much of this, so much of the end of my career is being focused on estate planning, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's helping people understand what those decisions are when those checks are released. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're doing a lot of harm to a lot of people without even, we don't think it's harm. I mean, who wouldn't want a million dollars, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, I'm just telling you what people do with it and the decisions they make when they're not accustomed to having that luxury or that opportunity are, are not quite the same. Mm-hmm. And there really are a handful of decisions that we want to make sure that people understand Um even before, you know, they were to get a large inheritance, making sure that they have these decisions in practice, um, such as we want to make sure that this paycheck that you're getting from working, that you're spending less than what you're actually making. So you're able to set aside some money going forward. 
we want to make sure that um, that you do have a savings built up, not just for retirement, but you also have something liquid that you have, um, say, in a bank account. So if an emergency were to happen, that you have access to those funds. We want to make sure that the debt that you have is good debt and you don't have a lot of bad debt built up. We want to make sure you're not paying these large interest rates on credit cards that you don't really need to be paying that's really hurting you going forward. We want to make sure that you're aware of your credit score and um, making sure that you know how to build that good credit. So there's just decisions that might seem like they're obvious to some people who have already been through it going forward, but it's knowledge that we need to make sure that all of our loved ones have to make sure that they know that these are really important going forward. And these are questions I've watched my daughters, right? So I, I mean, if you know me, you know I'm an addict, right? This is 24 <laughs> years of doing the show. I teach at every given opportunity. Um, just ask my friends. They, they wouldn't want to talk about it. But, you know, anytime I have the opportunity to share some of this stuff with you, I, I have. And I have watched one of my daughters ask some of the questions that Jamie just brought up to her grandfather, right? Now, I love my grandfather. Uh, I love her grandfather, you know, electrical engineer, you know, General Motors, smart guy, big, loving, huge heart, one of the greatest people that I've ever met in my entire life. But if you're going to ask a financial question, you probably ought to ask his financial planner, <laughs> right? Not <laughs> right. him. Right. And, you know, and, and yet she did. And it's kind of, you know, so we all fail at this communication in terms of of really where we are and trying to get people that proper, the proper literacy at the right moment mm -hmm. in, in terms of where they are. So, you know, Jamie and I have a program we called Family Bundling, right? So, you know, we, we take care of you so that we can also take care of your kids. They get the same billing rate you do with your permission, you know, so even though they may not have the same amount of asset base that you do, they're still able to get the same wisdom, guidance, and knowledge. So before they mess up um, because they're listening to somebody they shouldn't or before something happens to you and suddenly they're the great inheritance, mm -hmm. um, we're able to pass on those words of wisdom. So give us a call, yourlifeafterwork.com and the website, 800-928-4001 is the phone number. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.